Is there any possibility that with um, more developed research and uh, improved methods we will ever have a sure knowledge or a more sure knowledge of who the authors were? Well, we'll, we'll certainly never be able to tell f for every text uh, <laughs> who the author was. But for some of the texts, th there are plausible uh, candidates, uh, names that have come down to us of a uh, learned man. They had composed some texts and might, might have composed some of the sagas of Icelanders. And uh, I think there has been real progress made on this question since scholars first began to uh, think about it. And I think we can, in fact, expect more progress in the future. Mm -hmm. So now with uh, digital technology, uh, comparing different texts in extensive ways is uh, possible and in fact rather easy. So in cases where we have uh, a text by a known author, we can sort of measure the distance, if you will, from that text to another text, so a sort of a stylistic distance, and, and say, well, this text is quite similar or quite dissimilar, as the case may be, and this may able, uh, enable us to either rule out, to some extent, uh, that two texts were composed by the same person, or to argue that it might, in fact, be quite likely that they were. Mm -hmm. uh, now, most of the sagas are written from the mid-13th to the early 14th century, which is a pretty well-documented time in Icelandic history. And we do know, as you say, the names of several scholars, uh, clerics, aristocrats, people who, who definitely wrote something, um, and a lot of effort has been put into, you know, linking the sagas to specific historical individuals. Uh, the, and the question arises, is this a pure guessing game? Does it create the risk of jumping to conclusions when, uh, when a scholar really wants a particular saga to have been written by a particular author? Yes, there certainly is the, the risk of uh, getting ahead of ourselves, uh, sort of uh, maybe falling in love with a particular hypothesis. But um, still, I, I don't think this is a pure guessing game or that uh, or, or just scholarly fantasies. Um, I think some uh, some ideas are in fact quite plausible, while, while others might not be. Well, we must keep in mind that even though we have the names of some historical figures, we, we certainly don't have the names of everyone who, uh, of every <laughs> cleric or scholar in the 13th and 14th centuries. And no doubt many texts are by authors whose names have simply not come down to us. And in that case, of course, it, it's impossible for us to uh, link the, and, the text to the correct. And, and then there's also, also the, um, well, the the gray area between an author and the scribe, you know, scribes having maybe a little bit of freedom to kind of develop their texts. Indeed, we, we don't uh, know exactly how uh, perhaps a magnate like uh, Snorri Sturluson would compose a text. Presumably uh, he didn't sit with pen in hand and write every word by himself. I mean, that's not what I would do if I were a great chieftain. Mm. I, I would hire a person to uh, help me out. Mm to help out, and amanuensis. So presumably he would dictate what he was composing to his scribe, and his scribe might then uh, not write uh, word by word uh, what the great master is saying every time. He might have some influence of his own into how the text is composed. And he might also be assigned, so for example, the uh, Scholars were often working out of texts that already existed, so Snorri might perhaps tell his scribe, well, I'm going uh, for a break, but you can copy down this part while, while I go. So this doesn't really need to be changed. We can uh, incorporate this text into the text we are uh, com composing. So I don't need, maybe he didn't feel the need to dictate word by word everything.